I think it's time to pick up the trash. We'll try this pick stick. What? Well, you got that one. Got that one. Hey, what do you know? Got them all. It works. I'm Paul Bennett at Down East Enda Creations in the town of Millbridge along the Bull Coast of Maine. And this week I didn't have enough time to uh, complete all my draw pulls and draw fronts on the Midasaw station. Uh, that's a continuing project that will go into the following week. But uh, I did have time to do a, a shorter project. And so today I'm going to show you how I made this pick stick. Uh, more specifically, it's Mr. Bob Bag's pick stick. I named it after him. He's one of my subscribers. He's been with me a long time. He's made many comments on my videos. And when he didn't, uh, he didn't win on the, uh, he wasn't one of the winners on the 500 subscriber giveaway that I just recently had. And, um, and he had mentioned that He'd just be happy if I mentioned him in one of my videos. So, Mr. Bob Bag, if you're watching this, um, today's video is about making the Mr. Bob Bag pick stick. Now, what's a pick stick? You've probably seen people work crews along the side of the roads and highways picking up trash. And having a pick stick is just a it's just a piece of wood with a, a pick or, or a uh, a shaft, a sharp point on the end for stabbing and picking up trash so you don't have to bend over. And this is a very simple project. I made it from scraps that I had left over kicking around the shop. Didn't take very long to do and it's a handy tool because when you start getting older you want to go around the yard picking up trash and things that have been flying around and you just don't want to bend over that far because it hurts if you have arthritis or creaking joints and so forth. So this is something you can make easily. You don't have to go out and buy one. So stay tuned and watch me make the Mr. Bob Bag pick stick. So please subscribe, like and share, and thanks for watching. Scrap barrel. Here we go. Nope, that's way too short. I need something to use for a handle. we go. I got a piece of two by three and that's one and a half by two and a half and let's see how long it is. I think it's long enough. Yeah, that'll make it. It's about 36. I'm going to use this for the uh, for the handle. I'm just going to rip it down. So all I'm going to need beyond that piece of wood for a handle. It's one of these. This is a 3 8 inch diameter by six and a half inch long leg bolt and uh, you know you could use uh, uh, my metric friends might want to use 8 to 10 millimeter diameter. You could use a thinner one. It doesn't have to be this thick. And you'll see what I'm going to do with it. Uh, maybe uh, couple of hundred millimeters long, 150 to, to 200 millimeters, somewhere. The length, it can be shorter, it can be longer, it's okay. You'll see what I'm going to do with it and you'll see why the exact length doesn't matter so much. This is a pipe cap. I think it's for a three-quarter inch pipe. Uh, it's just a, a, a copper end cap. And you'll see what I'm going to do with that. Some glue and uh, Maybe a little bit of linseed oil or something for the handle, along with that wood handle I picked out. That's it. That's all we need for this project. I'm just I'm easing the edges, and I could do this with a sander too, but um, this block plane will take off a lot more material faster with less dust in the shop, and I'll hit it with the sander just a little bit later, but this will take off the bulk of what I want to take off, and again, I'm not trying to get 
perfectly round. I'm just knocking off all the, uh, the hard edges just to make it comfortable to hold. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a, a shallow cut all the way around on my bandsaw and then I'm just going to shave off a little, <clears throat> a little wood until I get pretty much the inside diameter which is the inside diameter of this measures roughly uh, an inch or so, uh, 25, a little over 25 millimeters. And I'm just going to pare away a little bit of this wood. My chisel's not very sharp. I need to sharpen it. Okay, I have a uh, four and a half inch grinder with a with a cutoff wheel, and I'm just gonna I have that hex head on there. Now that the lag bolt is in the stick, I don't need that hex anymore, so I'm just gonna cut it off. Uh, this one is equipped with uh, a regular grinding disc and I'm going to put a little point, I'm going to put a point on the end. Now, I'm only doing a little bit at a time because I don't want to overheat the metal and uh, it's very easy to do. If I stay at it and I keep constant pressure, it's going to turn dark blue and uh, it won't be much good to me. So in order to avoid that, I'm only grinding a little at a time. Uh, I should have a little bucket of water out here. I can cool it down. I won't have to wait as long. I've gone about as far as I want to with the grinder. There's only so much you can do. The grinder is just too coarse and uh, as you get close to getting to a point, the heat is really concentrated in that fine point and so it, it fills up heat very fast. So I'm just finishing her off. It doesn't have to be super sharp, but I'll finish her off with a hand file here. Just a little generic oil and seed oil. And I'm going to uh, coat the whole stick with it. This is like a nylon material braided. Um, I'm using a, uh, a soldering iron that has a blade on it for cutting this type of line. So as it heats up, it won't take long for a few seconds. And then I can cut it clean so it won't unravel one of the problems with this type of line. If you just simply cut it, it'll, the ends will fray and unravel very quickly. But this will cut the line and it also seals the end so that won't happen. And that's all it takes. <laughs>